OK. Centralize this. I'm going to advertise the stream again. I feel like you have to absolutely love platformers. Like, really, really love them on a deep mechanical level to appreciate gimmick. Otherwise, it's just going to seem like this total nightmarish onslaught. Okay, advertise the stream again, and um... Maureen, stick with it. I think you'll be gimmick. I mean, do you, do you think it's kind of creeping its way up there into into a game you think you're gonna love? Yeah, I think so. Uh, but now we're gonna play Trip World. I wanna show Trip World? This was released a year after Gimmick, right? I think about. The same year? I don't know. Oh, hold on, I'm getting a something in Nekawatsume. Okay. <laughs> this is the story here. Fred gave me a seashell earring. Thank you, Fred. <laughs> it's the story here of Trip World. There's this evil magician attacks this old grandpa. Is this a screen cap? Steals this flower. We must stop this evil bunny. <laughs> You'll notice at the beginning that the uh, that he has a flower stuck up on his head. Yeah, this is and it world. frames uh, both the flowers. Like it, it's trying to flame frame the flowers is powerful. Yeah, uh, this it's a really good little uh, beginning animation. Yeah, Some wordless storytelling. Thing. This Oops. game is really pretty. Aesthetically, with both the music and the and the graphics, um, it 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 shares no no uh, staff with gimmick, was it? That you said like no no staff at all. Even though it's gimmick only has like a four person staff, like it was like yeah. almost entirely so done by up here, Sakai. If I get this power up, Tomi Sakai works enemies. as an advisor on uh, Trip World, so it's heavily implied that he did have a lot to do with Trip World, like, Tomi Sakai's As you can, as you can notice here, the enemies don't thing. ever, like, damage me. Uh, this is important to notice, but I do gain points if I flower them. They become peaceful if I flower them. The story is that the entire country, the entire world, the entire Trip World, as you may, has gone crazy, sort of, and that's why they're, they're kind of like all over the place. But they never really attack you though, which is a, a cool little thing. This hedgehog kind of, like if you touch him, he kind of attacks you, but you know, he's just defending your, himself. Most of the enemies do not attack you. And I think that's really cool. The enemies have very... A lot of the enemies that can hurt you are just kind of like defending themselves and scared. Yeah. There's only one there kind of enemy. There are quite a few enemies that will only attack you if you attack them as well. Yeah. There's a few enemies that are openly aggressive. And they're the only ones that give you points if you actually defeat them. The rest will not. But anyway, Morgan, like, the guy basically entirely responsible for gimmick is Tomomi Sakai, and he was an advisor on this game. Mm -hmm. Like, I think he was, like, the superior advisor. Like, both games only have, like, an entire staff of, like, four or five people. And, um, like, it, it's really obvious, like, this is basically Tomomi Sakai's game. Yeah. It has a lot of similarities with gimmick, the, the, the cute, uh, the cute, uh, people and the the, anim <clears throat> the advanced enemy AIs. His ideas are yeah. both here. Even the way that, uh, what's the name of the, the main character of Tripro, the, the bunny guy, kind of rose off the slopes, is very gimmick-like. Morgan, you know how to transform your forms, right? Oh yes, I forgot to, to I forgot that mechanic. Uh, I'm gonna show it later. The name of the character in this game is Yakapu. So this this is the enemy. This is as you can see the bunny doesn't hurt me either if I touch him. It just hurts me if he attacks me with that umbrella. And it's trying to attack me, like look at that. And if I beat him, I get life up and I got a bunch of points. These are the 
kind of the only... No, not the only enemies, but like, uh... The main enemies of the game that, uh, want to... An incredibly you. important thing to keep in mind is that most enemies do not give you points when you destroy them. Yeah. Like, only hostile enemies and only certain hostile enemies, like... Some enemies Cute that cat. can hurt you still reward no points because they're very easy to avoid. The game kind of subtly tries to nudge you into non-violence. Yeah. And this is a 92 game. Like, this is, this is very forward-thinking. Yeah, this game is incredibly progressive for its time. Like, it is way, way ahead of its time in terms of indie development. And this like, is I feel like indie games boss. today are only starting to grasp some of these things. It's like, because this game was obscure, it wasn't really learned from, and it really disappoints me. It was just yeah, really brilliant for its time. I, I think it's still an excellent game. I think it's still better than almost every indie game now. It was really fun playing this, and then... um. I, I got a cartridge like just before Undertale came out, and playing these two right next to each other was kind of fun. Yeah, this is the stage one boss. It's Chung Pao, I think. He is openly aggressive. As you can see you need to defeat him in order to to beat him. The combat in this game is also kind of non-violent. You just like sort of kick things. Like yeah. I, I don't think you actually kill stuff even if you defeat it. Chang Pao didn't use his attack, but basically his attack was a is a jump kick. He does like this jump kick thing. He does a dive kick. Yeah, he does a dive kick. Here's another fruit. It will transform uh, Yakopu into a ball. And I can. If you hold down one button while you're in ball form, it bounces you higher. If you hold down the other, it bounces you faster. Yeah. And um, you can hold both at once and do. I really, got another really fruit, cool and once I eat out fruit and I have another fruit on, I get a combination of abilities. And a combination of ball with the other ability that I have turns me into this tiny form, this tiny mouse. Some enemies will be actually, like, aggressive to me if I'm a mouse. There's a cat enemy that gets aggressive if I'm a mouse, but it doesn't if I'm not. Oh, I love playing with that mushroom guy. That mushroom guy is so fun. I love how only that part of the level is specifically just covered with a bunch of mushrooms to kind of imply it's his home. Look at this Those little leaf cat. guys will actually sprout feet if you to let them hit the ground, Morgan. Yeah. I, I was You I was can going miss fast. a lot of stuff in this game yeah. if you play it like an average platformer. I was going fast because I wanted to show the transformation. Um, here's this giant cat. This giant cat just wants to play with you and he just walks around. It's... Giant cat is the best. I've heard so if you cute. attack Giant Cat, he gets mad and attacks you back, but otherwise he just like wants to really be your buddy. Let's try that then. <laughs> no, don't Let's kick see. him! Oh no, he's aggressive! Kick them. Look at him! Morgan! <laughs> Look, I want to show Why? this game. Why did you do that? Did now he's just rolling around and trying to attack me. Just wanted to show that aspect of the game. Look, there's another Oh, trick. you have to hit him multiple times. Yeah. This enemy He's also gets shocked. aggressive. He can't believe that you attacked him. And the fruit gives me the. That or he whip really tail. wants to play with you. That's really cute. Oh, you can attack that little guy there, that little yeah. face guy, and he'll try to face you guy, up too. Yeah, if I attack him just once, he gets aggressive. Do not, do not attack that thing. That face guy scared me the first time I got to him, so I attacked There's him, and, I, and then he that. like shifted his face. If you go back to face guy, he'll be non-violent too. Like he, uh, he goes in and out of his uh, attack phases. Yeah. Anyway, got that. Uh, there's a heart there. Uh, there's a transformation mechanic that I didn't go through. If I hold up and press B, I turn into this thing. I need to re relearn how to control this thing because I forgot. Okay, you need to continuously tap, and you can't switch directions, otherwise it will fall. And, uh, and I can transform back if I hold. I, I like the subtle nuance to the little airplane there form. There we go. Transform back. You There's have another to transformation. be moving forward a little bit to keep yeah. your height. There's another transformation, but I'll get to it when I get to it. This game is so animated. I yeah. love these tiny little Mr. Saturns. This boss is a pain in the ass. It's a... It's a Cacleon, it's kind of like Cacleon from Pokemon, has these stripes and goes invisible. 
Shark likes to call him the Charlie Brown sweater monster. <laughs> it's true, he is. And kind of have to dodge him. Oh, I did it. Sometimes it will just not stop going back and forth, like spinning. Um, so that's really tricky. But I did it. Um, World Free has really pretty music. And if I press down and B, I turn into fish, Yakopu. <coughs> and that allows me to, to swim more freely, like this. Yakopu is a video game character that should have had, like, an entire line of a dozen punch shells. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. They're, they're just cute as well. You can throw Yume Taro in there, too. Yeah. Swimming here is Yakupu. And oh, do you have frames form. blurred in your emulator? Yes, yes I do. So I can show the, the proper transparency effects. How do I do transparency? It again? still doesn't quite properly emulate how a Game Boy works, go. but it's pretty close. There's something that you need to take into account with the Game Boy L C D screen, I guess I'm explaining this for other people, because uh, you know this. Yeah. Um is that it, it's an it's an LCD screen with a little bit of ghosting. So if you flicker something fast enough, it's going to appear to be a consistent image. Yeah. So when Yakupu's in water, or when anything's in water, it flickers so fast that if you're looking at it on a Game Boy screen, it appears to be like a consistent but slightly blurred image, and that's really great for a water effect. Not a lot of Game Boy games took advantage of this super well. Zass did in a particularly interesting way, but that's a story for another. Yeah, uh, I was waiting for the effect to, to, to disappear because I need Yakupu to not be, to not have eaten a fruit. Because I need flying Yakupu. Yeah, I feel like you should be able to cancel out of your uh, fruit transformations. But and you if can't. I fly over here with, with flying Yakupu. Damn it. Oop, I almost got it. Hold on. Damn it. There we go. If you hit Got that it. little uh, oyster dude, he'll he'll stand still. If you want to use him as like a little platform, you get an extra boost yeah. when you switch to airplane. And it's a little secret passage <coughs> that gets me to this other rabbit. Oh my god, he's gonna kill me! This guy's... <laughs> wow, he killed me. This one is way faster than the other ones. They keep getting stronger every iteration. I'm wondering if it's implied it's supposed to be the same enemy, like... That's like the only threatening regular enemy in the game that like just actively attacks you. Yeah. I at least showed you that You don't want to jump when you attack him, you kind of want to just run into him and kick him and then back up. Yeah. Uh, I'm not gonna show him any further because I just wanted to show that secret. You probably want to kill him to get the one up. Uh, I don't need it. You can actually uh, farm the one up. You can fight him repeatedly in uh, both instances that he drops the one up. If you learn the game, that's a good way to um, give you enough lives to actually do that. Mm -hmm. Morgan, did you actually fight the oyster boss without eating that uh, tail fruit? Oh right, I should yeah, probably do that. That makes it super that. hard. I always eat that fruit first. Yeah, I should probably do that. Let's get the tail. These guys can be annoying. When I use a Game Boy emulator, I, I like to use like custom palettes so it's black and white instead of the weird attempt to look like an old old Game Boy. I like these colors. They're okay. There we go, beat the boss. <laughs> but, the <this> thing's <coughs> not done yet. Let's keep going. See how Yakupu is much slower when he's not a fish. But at least he can jump real high. I'm getting hungry. Uh, what's down here? I forgot. 
Right, there's, uh, there's health. health. Yeah, I needed that. And this is one of our favorite parts of the game coming up. You have, yeah, I love that part. Yeah. So here are two... There are two special enemies here that are, you know, not enemies. They're NPCs? It's hard to not <laughs> call them enemies just because of how ingrained the term is in a game. For, yeah. Like any creature you interact with to be a monster. So there's this, this guy just... If you stay... If you, um, if you stay behind him, he just like starts bumping you like like this. Hold on. Yeah, the one guy tries to encourage you forward, and the and the other one's super happy to meet you, and then just follows behind after yeah. you jump over them. But if I'm behind him, he just starts bouncing against me. Like, come on. I love that if you wait behind, he he um if he's in front of you and you just wait there, he'll come back and bump into you. Like, come on, come on. Yeah, like this. That that's what I wanted to show. Like, come on, come on. Oh, now he just won't stop bouncing on me. Like he's being a bully right now. Come on. And I love this. This is so cool. Like, I don't know why more games don't have this. And there's this cat here that just wants to play with you too. And if you go all the way to the edge with them... Morgan, if you let the uh, little little badger guy get far enough ahead of you, like, yeah. if you if you have him walk in front of you, um, and he gets really far ahead, he'll actually turn and look back to make sure you're still coming. I forgot how to beat this boss. Uh, you just want to attack it as quickly as possible. If you have full health, and there's health, you know, before that segment, you can, uh, just damage dump him. Yeah, it's been a little while since I last played Trip Rod. This weird deformed penguin. We're now playing Trip Rod, Isa. Hold on, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna freeze you with the flower. Oh no! <laughs> you got blown away by the wind because I froze him with the flower. Okay, I just gotta make him go as... Make sure you don't get into the boss fight with the flower, because it doesn't help against the boss. Yeah. I I'd wait for it to dissipate. <coughs> he just wants to play with me. It's, it's like... God, Trip Road is so full of these, like... Complex AI of these... <laughs> that, that are just there just to play with you, just to, like, do these things that are... That aren't necessarily challenging or anything. It's amazing how few enemies in this game can even hurt you at all. Yeah. Like, the game is mostly just like this little stroll. The bosses end up really kind of, Bye, kind of a little bit dissonant. I don't know if that's necessarily a bad thing. Like, I, I, I like that the segments of violence are kind of condensed to these brief little encounters. There we go. World 4. So there, there, there starts to be more uh, aggressive enemies starting here on World Four. I wonder if Sakurai got the idea for Ball Kirby from Trip Road. Because this came before Kirby's Adventure. Yeah, That's... Sakurai. Sakurai's admitted he's a big fan of gimmick, and it yeah. stands to. It, it's an easy assumption to think that he's played Trip World too. You know, it's kind of funny because Kirby is like a pretty violent game. Like, I, I love Kirby. I love Kirby. I think Kirby's super cute. I, I think Kirby's a great accessible game. But like, I I feel like the accessibility never quite hit what. Trip World did for the most part. Trip World's bosses can be really off-putting to new players, but it's short, it's friendly, it's pretty easy to learn the bosses with a little bit of play, and yeah. the levels have very few enemies that can even hurt you. Yeah, absolutely. And, like, I feel like Kirby's Adventure, uh, you know, like, Kir Kirby Power stuff, like Kirby Adventure, Kirby Superstar, these Kirby games that are heavy on power abilities, they would just be better if enemies didn't hurt you on contact, which... Is something that Tripro does. Yeah. 
Kirby doesn't have non-violent enemies. I mean, Kirby is like like a little murder machine in his yeah. games. Like, like everything's made to be conflicted with. Trip World really tried to kind of push the narrative in a different direction. It tried to be like, hey, you don't have to fight everything. This, and I this mean, this case boss I'm fighting because I have time. to fight him, by the way. I have to fight this one to, to progress. Uh, Kitten? Hello, are you here yeah. still? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm still here, what's up? Okay, because you got quiet, uh, I interrupted you because I wanted to talk up to, to talk about the, that enemy. If I go here... I forgot what I was saying. Uh, that it's incredibly progressive and that Kirby's a murder oh, machine. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, it's, um, I still think Kirby was progressive. I, I still think Kirby was really interesting in being a more accessible game. But I don't think it explored non-violence, I don't think it explored, like, interesting ways to interact with enemies. Um... It... it's, uh... You know, it's, like, it, it really disappoints me that Kirby's Dream World... Fantastic game, by the way. Got so much attention and so much love, and then Trip World was just, like, forgotten. Morgan, have you forgotten the secret uh, super long legs form? Yeah, but you have to be pretty fast. If you if you get a fruit, basically if you get a fruit and you eat another fruit while you still have another fruit, in it, you get a new transformation. Um, I can show that with the tiny the tiny Yakupu, but in that level, if you you can get a Yakupu that is like super long, like. Think of uh, the weird long legs Mario from Mario Maker, and he sh and he shoots these super powerful Hadoukens. Oh, Morgan. Um. Uh, I'm gonna want you to do something. Um, once you get to the next fruit in the level, like uh, I want you to backtrack. Okay. Or right, hold on. Um, tell me when you get to the next fruit. I like, got it. I got it's it. Hard I I'm now tiny. You see, that's Aquaman. what I like to imagine happens in Kirby too. I, I don't think Waddle Dees like actually die or whatever. They probably just get popped out somewhere. Okay, I backtracked after I got the the grapefruit, but it, there was nothing there. What's up? Oh, hold on, hold on. Go back up to where the grape is. Uh, okay. Okay, I'm there. What's up? Okay, um, get the grapefruit and continue until you get to the next fruit. And if you still have the grapefruit active at that point, get that fruit. And if you don't, get that fruit and then backtrack to the grapes, okay? Okay. Like, I want you to combine the fruit that comes after the grapes with the grapes. And you can backtrack to do this. You get a secret form, and it's really neat. I want to show it to the screen. <laughs> I think these cats are actually aggressive to me. I think the cats will beat you up even if you're normal size, yeah. but they may just attack you if you're small. Like, those cats look a lot like the super friendly cat enemy in the previous level, but I don't think they're grown up and matured yet. Like, okay, I'm gonna backtrack They're now being a little be mean because they're young and they don't know better. Like, every enemy in this game has so much character. Let's see. Let's see if I can get it. Be run this. Oh, I might be able to get it. Okay, got the grape. Oh god, I'm giant. <laughs> I can't. I can't you actually, can actually get the grapes and then get the next fruit if you're super fast. But it's easier to get it while backtracking. But but now I can't climb back up because I'm too big. <laughs> yeah, you get stuck on that screen if you backtrack to get it. Um, you'll get you'll get small eventually. Isn't it adorable? It's like it the cutest adorable. thing in the world. Oh, um, well, oh you're in that God. form. You can't attack anything, but you also cannot take damage. Nice. That that form is like entirely an Easter egg. It's um the the the, the levels in which you can get it and the conditions under which you can get it are very difficult, and it's there just to be a cute little secret. I, I 
if, if Yakufu did have a plush line, that would be like the super deluxe. Three foot tall plush. Oh, yeah. Oh, I that, think I'll be able be to like get it. I think I'll be able to get it again. Oh, come on. Come on, Yakupu. No, I wasn't able. You gotta um, be really fast with the yeah. ball. You can be super fast with that ball. Yeah, I I just fumbled with some bounces. You get more used to the ball as you do it. Speedrunners love the ball form because it's about the only interesting thing about speedrunning this game. Yeah. You know my feelings on speedruns and how I think they are not good for games, but I'll save that for later. Oh, do you know where the one-up in this stage is? Uh, damn it, I got killed by the robot. I don't think so. Maybe I knew, but I forgot. Um, you know the falling bridge yeah, uh, I'm gonna fall right after here. the ball form? Yeah. Yeah, you want to fall down that bridge, and then it'll take you to a secret area where you can get a one-up. Oh, now I gotta go to the fish form. You can just jump on top of that robot's head straight over it. Oh, as I was saying that, you're actually falling on that bridge. Yeah. That's funny. Alright, do not attack the uh, guy with the spiked collar. Um, yeah, I attacked him. You want to stand on his head, though. I attacked him, and now he won't stop attacking me back. Yep. <laughs> I should. Yeah, because you beat him up. Like, there are a <laughs> lot of enemies in this game that won't attack you until you attack them yeah. first. Like, they just want to be friends or just want to be observant. You know, they're curious about you. Yeah. All right, you don't have continue in trip world, right? No, you can't. Yeah. Well, hopefully now I'll be able to show the other form. Let's go through the world one real fast, and I can also show. No, the I forgot what the game two. over screen of this looks like. It looks really cool. Yeah. The game's only five levels long, and level two and three almost feel like one level. Yeah. It's a little mean in not letting you continue, but um, once you know how to farm that one up, you can uh, you can get it done pretty easy. I, I think this is a pretty accessible game. Um, I kind of wish the bosses were a little bit easier because this game is otherwise just like incredibly easy for anyone to get into. And the bosses have this learning curve that uh, occasionally puts people off on the game a little bit. Yeah. It they're not the bosses are not as hard as gimmick, but they can still be pretty. Yeah. Mean. With, with gimmick, the game is like straight up for platforming experts that just absolutely love that stuff, and I love the game for that. But with Trip World, I feel like it, it benefits from the difficult bosses a little bit less. I don't feel like it needs them. Yeah. I mean, you do learn them, and it's like. You want to consider like the design sensibilities of the time. Like this is a 30-minute game. Kids at the time are gonna replay it until they get it down. Like yeah. it's it's easy for even kids to understand that. Yeah. But it's um it's a little disrupting to the flow if you actually do just want to get to the end. Oh, you kicked that guy down a hole so you didn't get his health. Yeah. I love this flying guy in this segment. I'm probably not gonna be talking in sync with the stream, but yeah. He just tried Tries to like kind of bonk you around, and sometimes you'll fly into those flowers that hit you. Yeah. Okay, let's show off. Can I do a a, a uh, secret transformation in World Two? Kitten? Um, I'm not sure. <clears throat> I'm just gonna take my time over here. I know that I can do the tiny one, uh, but I'm just gonna take my time here and show the enemies. Because I skimmed over them the past time. Look at this dancing I, I guy! I think world. This dancing guy is so cool. He's just fucking... Oh yeah, he dance. reminds me of a cool spot. The 7-Up uh, mascot. Yeah. You want to take your time in a lot of the levels. Just interacting with the enemies. Because they all have like unique AI behaviors, animations. Like they're very... This game is meant to be like slowly explored. And just you kind of oh, interact no! with things. You bump into I made the owl fall, fall down the bridge. Like, <laughs> yeah, if you hit him a few times, he just falls over. It's adorable. Yeah. Hi, friend. Oh, it turns into a mushroom. He's too shy. <laughs> if you get too close to him, he just turns into a mushroom. 
he will actually like get closer to you if you back up, but he backs up if you get close to him, and you get too close, and he's just shy and turns into a little mushroom. It's so cute. Look at these little leaves. They grow legs. Alright, bye. And there are these totem guys. I can just knock them like one away from the other, right? Or are they, are they always on a pillar? I wonder if they get aggressive. I think you might be able to knock them, them off. I've never yeah, done I knocked that them off. I knocked them off and now they're just jumping everywhere. Yeah, you knock them off by kicking them. But they don't actually get aggressive, they just get like really agitated. <laughs> I love that. And there's Big Cat again! Hi, Big Cat! Don't kick Big Cat this time. I can't believe you can even make <laughs> Big Cat mad. <laughs> you can. There's no secret area up here. It, it looks like there Whoa, is, those but there totems isn't. get like super mad if you kick them. Yeah, but they don't actually get aggressive. They just start. You might be able to kick them enough that they actually start doing it, but like, Maybe. I don't know. I don't want to hurt things when I play this game. Yeah. Look at this cute cat. Bye, I won't hurt you this time, sorry. I will hurt this guy though, show you how he gets aggressive. Like see, he changes his face! And starts jumping around! Like, who the heck are you? <laughs> but now he's, he's okay now. Let's get the fruit. Turn into Mouse Yakupu. Oh, hold on. Mom's calling. Okay. Oh, I still gotta pack stuff in this thing. Move. I don't think these guys get aggressive at all, do they? Oh, they start kind of getting aggressive, but they don't actually attack me. They're just bouncing around me like... Okay, let's do this boss again. Hopefully I'll get a good pattern. See, this is why I don't like this boss. He starts jumping, don't know when he's gonna jump or not. And you can't actually attack him once he gets invisible. There we go. I love World Freeze music. It's so cute. Oh, that's the wrong form. But at least I get to show you this. It just starts floating. Let's just swim through this. Oh, I can actually attack. I forgot that I could attack as Fish Yakupu. Of a bubble attack. It seems to me that gimmick and um, and trip world were inspired by Kirby's Dreamland since it came a year before both of them, and they kind of shared like the same kind of aesthetics, kind of like they seem like informed by uh, Kirby's Dreamland's aesthetics. The usage of uh, stars, for instance, uh, other than the cute mascots. Okay. I'm not gonna get to the secret again. Let's just go over here. Clamshell boss is much easier once I have the tail because he hides once you get too close to him. Bro. Okay. Let's transform into fish. Oh, we need to transform back. I 
down here, there's health. Ow! I stepped on a thing. I'm back. Hello. <laughs> Halo. I don't want to try using this razor for a little bit. I don't want to get the flower. The flower power up. The flower power. Get farther. Nope. You get points for uh, pacifying enemies with the flower. Yeah. I'm repeating myself, but I really like that uh, defeating most enemies does not reward you with points as if to subtly suggest, hey, don't do this. I really love these enemies, they're so cute. Just following me. Ah, this game is so pleasant. It's a pretty stark contrast with the image. <laughs> yeah, even though it's clear that they're both, you know, the trip world is informed by gimmick. Or share some of its ideas. Okay, let's try going fast now here. I like how the cow speeds up and slows down to be just behind you specifically. Like, these are all very deliberate things designed into the game. <clears throat> no, I missed the other fruit. Damn it. Mm, I needed that. I think that's... No, I, I think I still got a chance to get the long legs Yakupu, right? Do I still have a chance? Yeah, I, I think... I, I, I'm not sure where you are on the stream. Are you at the cakes or something? Yeah, I mean no, I'm not at the cakes yet. You can fly up and get that one fruit, Morgan. You don't have to bounce with the ball to get it. Oh, right. Yeah, I could do that. I'm gonna do that right now, actually. I keep forgetting about the power-ups because you don't use them very often. It is a short game, Isa, but also... Uh, the Game Boy is... Uh, kind of comparable to the NES in some aspects. The Game Boy is actually more powerful than the NES. The thing that makes some NES games more impressive is that the cartridges are able to have proprietary um, oh, no, stuff put on them, or you know, better mappers. Um, but you know, like like putting like just the hardware, the Game Boy is actually more powerful than the NES. Well, but also the Game Boy is processing less. than the NES. Oh, I should get this health again. What happens if I kick those guys? Damn it. That sack there is aggressive no matter what. It's just like a regular enemy basically. Sack it's a mean friends. sack. Yep. I like bouncing enemies around on my head. It's such a fun thing. No, I missed it. I missed the fruit there. Oh, uh, I think that's it. I think I can't get the long legs again. Oh, I can. I can. I just gotta be careful with the flying Yakupu. Yeah, you gotta fly back up there after the cakes and get it. And then that's the last chance you get to grab it. After I beat the cake? Yeah, I should do it. After yeah, you can I fly up after you beat the cake or you can just hang to the right, uh, right as you fall. Okay. Let's do flying Yakupu again. Oh, I guess you don't have to beat the cake to fly back up there. I mean, you can do yeah, either. Yeah, but it's better if I beat the cake first. 
I don't know, it's... Oh no, the whatever. kick response. <clears throat> hmm. The game is pretty short, Issa. There's not a whole lot on here. And these animations are, like, super detailed. There's a lot of frames and stuff. A lot of really interesting work. I wouldn't say that the game's necessarily short just because of that, though. I believe it could hold more. It's just... I mean, one, animating all this stuff takes up a lot of time. And uh, two, I, I think they had the design sensibilities in mind to, to, to create like a shorter game that's more respectful of your time, uh, sticks more into uh, what little it has to I'm not bumping make it into shine any as bright as possible. But Jacopo keeps. Do I have limited taps presses on while Jacopo's flying? It is super hard to explain how the flying mechanic in this game works. Um, you want to basically like tap it like five or six times, then inch forward with the D-pad, tap it five or six times. Oh, okay. You want to barely, barely... Okay, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Okay. The nuance to the flying mechanic in this game is really interesting, but it's, it, it's hard to explain. Okay, hopefully I'll get to do this fast enough. Come on, cake. Uh, I won't. I, maybe I won't be able to. Oh no, I will. There we go. Long legs, Yakupu. Look at this Hadoken. This guy's fucking powerful. What's really neat about that form is that the back blast from that fireball is so powerful you can use it to propel yourself across an entire screen. It's really neat. I don't think speedruns for this game use that. Why am I talking about speedruns when I dislike them so much? But it's, Boom! It's really Killed them in just like one Hadouken! I... Look at that! <laughs> yeah, you can beat the boss with just one of those. The cakes both die in one hit, too. <laughs> Back at World 5. Morgan, you should try using the back blast uh, uh, next time you play, just to see how far you can fly when you shoot it out of your mouth. Yeah. Like, I mean, you really go flying. Like, you can fly across that one horizontal screen, just like, pew! Can I affect the butterflies? No, I can't put flowers on butterflies. I'm gonna get the grape. Turn into tiny Yakupu. I'm gonna get the transformation again of giant Yakupu again. Let me just get the the tiny Yakupu effect over and then I'll do that. Just let the effect wash away. Okay, there we go. I gotta get the grape. What is that fighting game? I'm trying to remember it, like... What fighting game? Is it... Uh, the one that Yakupo shows up in. Is it Waku Waku 7? Waku Waku 7, uh, no. yes. It is Yaku... I mean, that is a, a Sunsoft fighting game, so I'm assuming it, it might be it. Yeah, it, it has... It's also called Waku Waku 7. Like, oh, it, it? Yeah, it has... Yeah, see? I thought they were good. There no, we go. Oh, no, they Giant are Yakupu. I never really played Sunsoft's fighting games. Yakupu oh God. looks weirdly like mean in the fighting game that they show up on. I can't I, I can't beat this Yakupu, boss because like, Giant Yakupu can't attack. <laughs> oh my god, this form is literally <laughs> yeah, useless. You gotta wait for it to cool down. <laughs> uh, I thought this was gonna be really useful because I'm invincible, but no. At least I can just bounce this giant cat around my head. Oh, I'm gonna die. Yep. Yeah, Yakupu looks super vicious in that fighting game, but I think it's just to fit in with the art style. Oh, this fucking cat just kicked me! You motherfucker! 
Fuck you. It wasn't even you, the cat who kicked me, but I'm just saying a message here. Fuck cats. Wow. <laughs> Except for my giant easy, cat friend from from World Two. You all can go fuck yourselves. Oh, weird. Is everyone- oh, everyone else also getting that? That's weird. Oh, yeah, the connection is not doing great. The bitrate is very low. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm getting the audio like mega mega delay. They're probably not even gonna know we're talking about this till way late. Mm. I, I guess I should type here. I'm gonna try... Okay, I'm gonna try a thing here. Hold on. I'm gonna close the call. Um, I think the quality is going back up a, a little bit. Hopefully, it will stay this way. I mean, you're on the last level. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you skipped the one-up. I got giant Yakupu. Fireball. Oh my god. Fireball. Just like a. Dang it, what's that Digimon's name? Uh, Gilmon. There we go. We need to watch more Digimon, Morgan. We do. We do need to watch more Digimon. Oh no, my power-up didn't last that long. Oh no, this- the guy's sword killed me. These two are openly aggressive and they fuck you up. Yeah, they're like royal guards for the uh, yeah. kingdom castle. Okay. What I like to do is I just turn into airplane Yakapu on the screen before that and I just fly over them. Mm -hmm. There it is! There's the king! No, just kidding. It's those two fuckers. It's the gerbils from Gimmick. <laughs> And there's, oh my god, that's But I kicked the You back. can bully that robot all the way back to a different screen, it's kind of fun. Oh no, he killed me before I got the one up! <gasps> oh, before I could get the health up. Killed me. Totally fucking killed me. Oh, just fucking jump kick me. Oh well. This this is Trip World at least showed a lot of the game and a lot of the secrets too. This is why Trip World's great. The final boss is vicious. I mean it's it's a gauntlet of three bosses. I beat one of them. And then I had to beat two other bosses. And uh they can be really hard. Um Yeah. <laughs> it's Trip World. <laughs>